Should you overclock your GPU? Is it even safe? Is it even worth the risks? Let's find out. But if this is your first time to the channel and you're into building and fixing up gaming PCs on a budget, consider clicking the subscribe button and notification bell to catch all new uploads the moment they drop. Doing this helps me grow here on YouTube and as a content creator. And for that, I appreciate you all to the moon and back. So last week, I did a video to see if the R9 280X held any relevancy here in 2019. And to give you the TLDW version or the too long didn't watch version, good old boy still had a little bit of boogie left in its tank. I was able to run games like Apex Legends, Fortnite, Shadow of the Tomb Raider without any problems. I did need to do some setting tuning though, thanks to that 3GB VRAM buffer. But the question is, if you're rocking an older GPU like the R9 280X, is overclocking worth its weight and frustration because it is hit or miss and there are no extra performance guarantees. So let's do it anyway. And would you look at that, plus 260 on the core, plus 205 on the memory. Ladies and gentlemen, this GPU is overclocked, prime, and good to go. Let me show you how I got those numbers. Jumping over to MSI Afterburner and starting with the power limit, we're gonna go ahead and slide this all the way to the right, making the GPU more power efficient and allowing it to reach higher temperatures than it would at stock. Typically, there is a lot of trial and error when adjusting the values here, but we already know this GPU can handle plus 
180 on the core thanks to all those heaven runs. So we're going to move this slider to the right until we hit our target clock speed of 1120 megahertz. Add another plus 175 on the memory, sliding that over as well, and then fan speed toggle off auto which would fluctuate as GPU temperatures changes and set a manual fan speed of uh, let's say 70%. This should keep the GPU cool while not using a lot of power, allowing us to sustain that clock speed. Hit apply and boom, you're good to go. I did try and push the R9-280X a little bit further and even with a 100% fan curve, which the temperatures are fine by the way, but even with a 100% fan curve, I was unable to get this GPU stable past 1120 megahertz in heaven. And now speaking of heaven, the 280X scored 50.7 average FPS at stock, but when overclocked managed to squeak out an additional 5 to 6 frames, making it 9% faster on average. And to see how this overclock would scale playing actual games, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Apex Legends, and Fortnite. I wanted to test the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game that I just recently uh, benchmarked at 3440 by 1440p, but at this price point, I wanted to save that video or topic for another time, so be sure to get subscribed if you're not already to catch that video when it drops. And now starting with Fortnite, which saw the biggest boost from the overclock, man, is just over 82 average FPS at stock, but when overclocked, increased overall performance by 17%, bumping up our average FPS minimum and 1% lows. And then Apex Legends, the 280X scored an average of 89 FPS at stock, but then with the overclock managed to average just above 100 FPS, making it 17% faster, but with a slightly lower minimum and 1% loads, which is odd, but we didn't drop below our monitor's 60 Hertz refresh rate, so overall, the experience was pretty smooth. Then to test the overclock in an even more demanding game, I loaded up Shadow of the Tomb Raider and ran its built-in benchmark, which the 280X at stock managed a heaping 38 average FPS on the low preset, and then a slight bump after the overclock to 44 average FPS, making it 14% faster in that category, but not doing much to improve our minimum FPS. Now, I do enjoy overclocking. It's one of my favorite things about enthusiast tech, but I also love how you can squeeze out just a little bit more performance from some of the older budget stuff as well. Because as you can see here, depending on the GPU and the game, and you being comfortable with the risks, there could be extra performance had from some of your older hardware. And if you're ready to make the leap and start shopping for parts for your next game and build, check out this video right here. So to learn more about budget PCs and other gaming related stuff, watch the top video first and the bottom one next. Tap the round subscribe button right there on the screen. Again, this helps me grow here on YouTube and as a content creator. And with that said, that'll be all for this one. Thanks for giving it a watch. I hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.